the industry, which is yeah, yeah. really, really well, I'm scary. I'm not so sure that it's not dangerous, honestly. I mean, when you're disrupting, big, potentially disrupting big industries like this. Yes. Um, I mean, I think there's the, the potential legal consequences, um, but who knows? With uh, is that is that the main reason why why you uh, uh, touched base with Louis, seeing his previous works? Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. We sort of we, we did some shooting in, in 2013 originally. Joseph Pace, the other uh, producer, and I had been sort of talking about it and, and sort of working on ideas um, all of 2012, and uh, then we finally got some funding in 2013, and we shot some stuff. Um, we went to Germany, we went to Toronto, we went uh, across the Eastern Seaboard, and we shot some great interviews. But the quality wasn't just really quite there, and there was some really. Um, some really interesting stories of some of these athletes. Yeah. And we felt like we needed a powerful storyteller. And obviously, I'd seen The Code. And uh, I think it's the most award winning documentary of all time, over 70 awards. And obviously, it won the Oscars and the major Sundance Awards or whatever. But um, so we sort of shortlisted directors, and he was at the top. And we at least wanted to have a conversation with him to so uh-huh. get advice on you know, who might be able to direct it. And he was sort of a dream director, but we didn't think. It'd be you know, possible. Joseph and I, we've never made a film. We didn't think it would be possible to get. So, um, you know, we met him at Talladega Raceway. He was a race car driver called Leilani Munter that invited us, and um, and Louis was there. And we sort of asked him. We said, well, you know, we can. He said, yeah, I think I can help you guys with this. And then, sort of, two weeks went by. And I think he was busy, and we didn't hear from him. And then, you know, he set up this call, and so he said, well, "What did you mean when you said you could help us with this?" You know, I, I want to direct it. We went, oh, wow. Okay, we just thought you were going to help us, like suggest the director or something and wow. so he did four other sort of film projects at the time that people were sort of really pushing him to do and yeah. trying to make a decision between those four and then when he heard about this idea he jumped on it and just said look this is going to make a, a bigger impact than my last two films and a significant change uh, if we do this right uh, in the world so um, so he jumped on board and, and that was 2014 he was still finishing off some stuff with uh uh, racing extinction yeah and so you know we started talking a little bit 2014 and he agreed to do it and then uh, we started filming with with louis in 2015 and it went from there it's very much part of a, a agents of change hybrid yeah all, all three of his films yeah no, from boners to boneheads mm-hmm. well I'll, I'll say his name Connor mcgregor who's fun yeah. to watch but he says a lot of stupid things um yeah. the position of the film i it still plays with this thing, um, alpha male stereotypes. Right. Um, and when I'm watching a film like this, I'm thinking, isn't violence the bigger, potentially the bigger issue? And, and so, Absolutely, yeah. because when you get to plant-based diet, you become, it's, you follow a vegan, vegan perspective, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think there's different approaches to sort of, this sort of vegan has become very stigmatized, right? And so a lot of people sort of associate with animal rights. Yeah. But, you know, people are eating differently for... For a multitude of reasons, yes, right, exactly. exactly. And so some people change the, you know, go more plant-based for the environment. Yeah. Some people are for their health. Some people are now seeing the benefits to athletic performance and the science that backs that up. Some people are in it for, for animal welfare or animal rights reasons. And so just because you change your diet to go more plant-based or all the way plant-based, uh, I don't think it necessarily means that you adhere to, you know... You might not even care about animals. You might not care about animals at all, and that's fine. You're just getting the benefits for yourself. Um, And so, but I I agree that the point that you're going on is um, what we're not necessarily busting in the film is this myth that what it means to be a real man. We're just sort of going on what the traditional railroad is. So we're trying to meet people where they're at. Yeah. And... um, but I think if people do start caring about the environment and the, and the animals or whatever, then um, that can also start to change how they perceive themselves and what it mean, means to be a man. And y- you as a character, mm-hmm. was that, first of all, was it established that you would be the, the way into... No, honestly, I mean, so when I started this idea originally myself, you know, shortly after Joseph Pace came on and really is really what made the film came together, to be honest. But... Um, when I started the idea myself, I, I started. I bought a used camera off of Craigslist, and I, uh, you know, didn't have the money to make a film. And I went on YouTube, learned how to do the three-point lighting, <laughs> and uh, so I, uh, I just started traveling around and filming some athletes. Or, um, in fact, I'd wait till they came close to LA so I didn't have to pay for flights. Yes. But um, I, uh, 
I, uh, I filmed you know, some athletes and some experts, and I, I didn't want to be in the film at all. And then I met Joseph, and he said, I think it, you know, the, the journey that you've been on, that's what the story we should be telling. Mm -hmm. You've been traveling around or you know, interviewing these experts and, uh, and athletes, and elite athletes, and that's the story. Yeah. Because like, you know, what, what is the story, and here's the story. Rather than just having a bunch of vignettes and just a bunch of talking heads, mm -hmm. it's like, let's put your actual story in. You know, and so that's what happened. And then, it, unfortunately, uh, my dad had a heart attack, in, you know, in the middle of filming. And that's when it went from this sort of personal, almost selfish thing of how do I, uh, I you know, I got Relate injured. That. People that haven't seen the film, you know, I tore both of my knees, sparring with the future heavyweight champion. And, uh, you know, I had all this time to research optimal nutrition for recovery and performance. And... Um, you know, during this this journey, it was, it was quite selfish to start with. Obviously, just you know, how do I get back in there and fight in the cage? Yeah. Which is, in the grand scheme of things, really doesn't matter. Um, but then, when my dad had a heart attack, that sort of switched for me, and it went from the personal to the interpersonal. Yeah. And then eventually to the universal with the impact that we're having on the planet. So, there was quite a, you know a, a natural sort of just narrative there that existed, um, going from something that was sort of quite specific into. You know, realizing that there's a lot more going on, and, and uh, uh, the, the choices that we uh, make in terms of food can have a massive impact across multi, uh, multi of sectors. You know, you come into this from a plant-based athleticism point of view, mm -hmm. but then with the supporting cast of characters, and specifically the hunter, where where he starts having more cognitive. Uh, ideas about moral and ethics right and he sort of like put that towards the end specifically I thought that was a smart choice because what happens is you as an athlete you're you know you're used to muscles training all these muscles right. and whatnot but now you're starting to use the you know a cerebral muscle if right, you will. Right, right. and so I was wondering and bringing in your father as an example mm -hmm. is that you're going from athleticism but then it starts that dinner table discussion starts going beyond what you're eating. You know, I think that's, uh, it was a natural part of the journey, which just sort of worked out well, because that it was sort of very selfish, and there's something bigger here at, yeah. at stake, and my dad's health, and then, you know, the public health, I mean, leading causes of uh, the chronic diseases and death in the United States are really related to diet, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and then again, yeah, and then the question with the, the former former hunter himself, former poacher himself, yeah. uh, that then sort of has a real change of heart um, and really starts thinking, why am I protecting rhinos and elephants in Africa uh, with this international anti-poaching foundation, Damien Manda, 12 tours of duty in Iraq, seeking to destroy tattooed across his sex, you know, 6'3". Yeah, the, the, the prototype warrior. Exactly. Yeah. And so he has this real change of heart and sees the front of an elephant's face cut off or it's ivory, so someone can have it on their desk. And, uh, and then starts thinking, I'm being a hypocrite here. Why am I protecting rhinos? Um, but then, you know, eating a cow when I get back home. Uh, so, um, you yeah, know, just growing steaks, and he cares obviously about the animals, and, and then the environment, and how the meat industry is taking away that land. Um, the wildlife That's disgusting. Is living on. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, there's growing steaks, which I think makes it good, for a great narrative. Yeah. Um, but I think we were lucky that the, it was really just my journey. And of course, you know, you accentuate certain parts of the story and downplay others. Um, but we were fortunate. Part of the marketing materials, executive producer credit goes to James Cameron. Yeah. He's done a ton of films, and his more interesting films, which explore larger ideas, are the Avatar films. Right. Um, so I was wondering if you could t discuss that participation specifically. Yeah, I mean, James Cameron uh, saw a documentary in 2011 called Forks Over Knives, which okay. looked at the heart disease and cancer and health diet was related to that, especially animal protein that can actually turn on and off a cancer cell um, based on the more sulfur containing amino acids. Um, but uh, after you watch Forks Over Knives, he went home, he threw all the animal foods out of his uh, you know, uh, closet, kitchen, closet, cupboards. Yeah, everything, and then never ate them again. Wow. And so he is very passionate about the environment and, and the sort of damage that we're doing to the planet if we want to have something that our children can actually live on. Yeah. Um, and he's also passionate about his health. And if you look at photos of him now compared to 10 years ago, he looks 10 years younger than he did 10 years ago. Um, he lost weight, he looks healthier, his skin looks better after he changed his diet. So he's 100% in, you know. And so when he heard about the project, through Rip Esselstyn, actually, who's uh, one of our executives, he's also the firefighter that's in the Okay, film. okay. And um, 
Yeah, he looks great. I mean, he's ripped just in his shirt. I mean, it's just like a great spokesperson. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, love, I love the insertion of, of him in the film. Yeah, and so um, he put us in touch with James Cameron, and, you know, and James sort of you know, really believed in the message and this whole sort of real man eat meat myth, which sort of becomes about in the middle of the film with all the marketing to men. Um, but uh, so he was, and then we got, when we got Louis on board, then he sort of had a lot more faith in the project as well, because not just sort of James and Joseph who've never made a film before, but uh, having Louis, who's made some award-winning films, um, added a lot of clout. And, and yeah, so of course. That's when Jim Cameron really committed, and uh, we've been really appreciative of his support, obviously, because um, it's, uh, it's really helped us you know, in a number of ways. Oh. If you ever have to, have to use a move, I do like the, the, the choke. Okay, the choke. Because, and if you do it properly, you can do it where you just cut off the blood supply to the brain. You're not hurting them, it's very temporary. You put them to sleep, but there's no injuries. Yes. And that's how I'd like to, if I ever have to <laughs> subdue anyone, I'd much prefer to do it without having to hurt them. Great. Uh, thank you very much, James. Awesome. Appreciate, appreciate uh, your... Sure. Uh,